one of the things about it that I noticed, and I'm just looking at a couple of my notes here that I have, uh, is you have this book, which is a non pareal book. This is as, as non pareal as Moby Dick was in the 19th century. From the asides that Manny Cole does, where he digresses on a subject, and I mean, there's some, there's some points, even as you mentioned that there is, these are working class characters who often fail at the subjects that they're speaking about. There's little tropes that are used where suddenly Manny Cole breaks into talking about the four different levels of the universe and all sorts of cosmic ideas. And he is the only one out of all of the characters who is able to consciously talk about these type of things, even if it's in a very lame, if it's received in a layman kind of fashion. But one of the things I noticed about the structure of it is that you could take the name chapters, Gino, Eldo, and Dino, and you could layer them onto each other and you'd get a complex character just from that. But as a whole, you get little gifts, I should say, that you wouldn't get if you just did something like that, if you just had a book that was titled Gino or Aldo or Dino. Now, one of the things about that is that there's symbols used, such as a spider, which is put in the context of a rape, which is put in the context as if the spider was a god to its web, and put in the context where several characters are killed. And you only get the kind of Rashomon-like quality of, of that and contrast by reading the whole book and seeing how the symbols both work on each other and contrast each other. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, the book, a book like that should be read more than once. Uh, I mean, uh, the only thing I could think that was close to it in structure was the book Legs by William Kennedy. But this one is obviously writ large and has even more complex characters because even not just the main characters, not just the tertiary characters, but also just some of the characters that that have one scenes are fully realized characters. And you have a passage where you're talking about how doors keep opening and you're using it as a metaphor for character development and everything. Well and uh, they keep they keep being lighted. And this it's a very Assurian kind of technique where you're constantly using one character to better define another character, but at the same time, that fully fleshes out that individual character. Let me let me talk about technique for a second. You know, there's an old saying, I think it was Picasso, someone asked him, how could he paint such masterpieces so quickly, or, or a famous painter, and he said, it took me 50 years to learn how to paint a masterpiece in three hours or something. When you're writing, uh, you know, I couldn't have written even Tumbleweeds, uh, the first book in the series, which is a great book. And I, I put it against any published book. And it's, it, I would say it's in the top 10 or 10, top 10 or 20 of American books that would be published if it was published alone. But it, it certainly pales compared to the Vincetti brothers. And when you read A Norwegian in the Family, you'll see how the Vincetti brothers pales uh, to A Norwegian in the Family. But the thing is, when you're doing these techniques, you have to unconsciously know that you're you're gonna when you're doing uh, how to put it uh i'm 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 doing one chapter and i'm leaving threads open and i don't know necessarily if i'm going to pick up all of the threads some in the book are going to remain uh, uh unclosed because that's the way life is so that gives that in itself lends realism other threads will be picked up and tied but in unusual ways but you have to you have to have an overall vision of the book when i wrote the vincetti brothers for example when i've done any of the books since then i have an A to B. I have a general beginning and a general ending. Sometimes those endings, let's say if I was going to end up in a particular place emotionally or a particular area or with a certain thing, I just know the general way I'm going to end it. The specific of how I write it is going might be totally different, although it will have the emotional impact or will have the, uh, the diegetic uh, ending that I desired. And you have to know and be good enough uh, that you're not overly plotting. One of the biggest problems with books, even aside from cliches and, and bad characterization, is books are way, way over plotted. You read something by Franzen or Richard Russo, you know exactly what's going to happen because they they will look back and they'll have a note uh, on page 233, foreshadow event on page 602. And I've seen people who, who write these extensive notes. You can't do that uh, if you want to have a realistic book. Um, 
I knew, for example, uh, that I was going to have the three main brothers end up as I thought the three main brothers had ended up in real life with a uh, Gino uh, probably going to the mob and being killed, although I didn't, I've never seen his death certificate with Aldo overdosing, which didn't turn out in real life as they found out a few years later, but it seemed the likeliest thing. And then Dino ending up as the most normal of the three main brothers. Um, but you have to, although he ends up in kind of his own purgatory as well. Yeah, but it, it's 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 a suburban kind of hell, uh, a working class kind of hell, which you know most people are in. But but you have to you have to uh, you have to let your unconscious do certain things. Um, not everything. When you're talking about using doors as a metaphor, using a fly or something, I have a great scene in a Norwegian in the family with the character of Bit von Rheingold is with Andy Warhol at at uh, a hospital, and Jessica said this was one of the things she stole for one of her books. And the fly is in their room as they're talking, and then the fly sort of flies off and flies around the hospital for two or three pages until it gets back to where Warhol and the character of Bit von Rheingold is continuing their conversation. Well, why do I do that? It just uh, it wasn't that I was saying, well, I'm talking about the, uh, the uh, how little they are in the scheme of things or whatnot. It was an impulse right when I got there. And sometimes a lot of these things, I'll go through three or four drafts and, and, and something will emerge. Uh, you have to know that uh, your overmind, if you will, is thinking about things even as you're not consciously plotting them. And and you have to be a great enough thinker to do this and a great enough artist. A bad artist can't do it. This is why a lot of them overplot things. But by by allowing things to emerge as you're writing it, in the process of writing it, a lot of the things that happen to characters, for example, uh, if they have an earache or if they have a prostate issue or they have this, that, or the other things are things that happen to me or happen to Jessica. And as I'm writing it in that year, it's important to me. So it becomes part of it. Paulie Maravelli and a Norwegian in the family suffers from prostate issues, which a few years ago I was having. Uh, but uh, you, have, you have to let these emerge. And so what the reader thinks is a carefully plotted thing oh, Dan must have really plotted this out, are things that are imbued by you, the reader. Not that they're false, but those are things that I set up so that naturally a reader would come to that conclusion. Uh, and I did that unconsciously because I leave things open enough so that the, imbu the imbuement by the reader can take strand A, strand B, and strand C and tie them and say a sale or not uh, because it looks like they're coming together. And by... And that's that's one of the things is you you say to the reader or a great artist in any form is, is to the the percipient is going, well, I trust this person to get what's generally going on. You may, for example, see uh, something far more political in a symbolism uh, than what I intended. And someone may see that exact same symbolism and see something in a humanistic bent, or they may see it as a con comment on on this, that, or the other thing. But that's what a great art does. It allows people to reasonably imbue things into it. If you let, if if all the doors are open and it can mean anything, it's not really art. This is why abstract expressionism is such a gigantic failure. This is why bad gimmick writers like David Foster Wallace or Dave Eggers or these writers who just, you know, hand job themselves and spew, uh, get sticky uh, uh, on their typewriter boards. That doesn't work. But you have to leave some, you have to leave some areas open for people to imbue so that the work becomes uh, your work. When you read Huckleberry Finn, for example, no matter how detailed Twain could be, uh, say in the description of Huckleberry Finn, your Huck Finn will look different than my Huck Finn.